All right, welcome everybody. It is January 14th, 2022. This is the January 1st conversation at the center for uh, 2022. I apologize for having this a week later than normal. Uh, what happened was, is I was off sick um, and it was a doozy. I had it in my chest and everything. I was COVID negative, but still, um, and I didn't want to drop it right on the lap of Dr. Haddon to do it. And I know that she's greatly appreciative of that. So we just rescheduled for today. <clears throat> so I have some questions. I'd like to go over them with you really quick. Uh, so this is, this is kind of from a response of going back and forth on Facebook about if we are a Haas facility. Now Haas, H-A-S-S, -S, it stands for Human Animal Support Services. And it's, it's, it's more or less a, like a psych, psychological way or a, a way of running an animal center that really involves humans and <clears throat> services. It kind of mirrors a little bit the, the consensus of um, like fostering foster care on a human aspect. So um, we are not a Haas facility. We usually what it is, is you sign on as a Haas facility and then you are 100% immersed, embedded in the Hamas, or sorry, the Haas um, psychological part of it. And we are just not that, we're, we're not into it. However, we do have some programs that we do that could be considered a Haas program. They're slightly modified. Haas is pretty strict, um, but ours are modified and I'll go over those. So this is the question is to say, you say ASCFD is not a Haas facility, but that you have decided to use two components from the program you feel have demonstrated success. The first is appointments for owner surrender. The second is asking community members who find strays to attempt to locate an owner before surrendering them to ASCMV. Are these the only two components of the Haas program you have implemented for your shelter? Yes, those are only two that we have purposely. I mean, there may be something else that I'm not fully aware of that Haas may or may not do that we're currently, but those are the only two that we have specifically intentionally implemented, but it's not exactly the same as Haas. For example, <clears throat> and this is the next question, is, is if a community member finds a stray does everything necessary to locate the owner, but no one steps to claim up this pet within 72 hours. Does the community member now become the owner of this animal and responsible for its care or will ASCMV now take said animal in? So that is the Haas version is that if nobody comes to claim this animal that you found and you've tried to find the owner for, then you are now responsible for the animal. We don't play that game. Um, that's one kind of alteration. What we do is, is if an animal finds, or I'm sorry, if a person finds an animal, we require them to fill out online or in person uh, the lost animal report that can be found on our website. And then it has, the, in our policy, it's three days for an animal that has uh, no sign of, or no proof of ownership, and five days for an animal that does have proof of ownership. And those are just so people can um, have a chance to find their animal. After that period, then the animal needs to come to the ASCMV. So um, now does the person who finds the animal, do they have, can they adopt the animal after that period? Then yeah, you can, you bet. We've had that happen quite a bit. Uh, but the person doesn't automatically own or, or have responsibility for it. Uh, the other thing is, is we will take that animal any time during that, that lost period. For example, somebody comes and says, hey, I found this animal. We'll ask, <clears throat> we'll give them a piece of paper. And on the paper, it says, please uh, try to find the owner uh, before bringing this animal to the center. And we give suggestions, go for a walk around with the animal, um, post it on multiple Facebook pages, uh, you know, post uh, notices around your neighborhood because odds are that animal did come from somewhere. Michelle, you have a success story that you shared with me about uh, doing that exact same thing. Could you share with us that? Well, um, a stray dog came to my house. Um, I tried to ignore it, so just go home. It didn't go home. 
It was a puppy, probably eight, 10 months. So I took it for a walk and one of my neighbors knew where the dog lived and told me and I took it home to him and he was grateful. Just right actually catty corner to where I live, so. And have you ever seen that dog before? No. No. Uh, and that's often the case more than others is, is people just aren't really aware of um, what animals the, the, the person has or owns for the most part. I know I don't. I mean, my neighbors are, are a little ways away. I don't know if they own any dogs. It might be little nappers that are inside. So it's important to, we urge people all the time to do that. Now, if they can't find the owner or something doesn't work out, then bring the animal back to us and we'll take the animal in. No questions or anything. Um, and, and to show that, we had one of our board members, actually, it was Counselor Tessa Stuve. She had a dog and she did the same thing. Went for a walk for it. They found a dog, went for a walk, couldn't find it. And then she was just going to hold on to it until she could um, post some postings around. But the dog started to be aggressive towards, um, I think it was her kids or their, their other dog, I can't remember. But the aggressive part portion started. So she's like, I can't, I can't have this animal here. Brought to the center, we accepted it, no issues. I had no idea this even happened until in a board meeting when she told the story. So I'm glad that uh, that worked out the best for her. All right, so I hope that answers that question. Next one, when an animal, particularly a dog is impounded, how long is the wait for said dog to have his photo taken and his information put up for owners to see and know their pet is at the ASC, ASCMV and go claim? That's the first part of the question. Our goal is 24 hours. And, and I, I mean hours, not just the next day. The reason is, is sometimes it's not uncommon for us to get seven, eight animals overnight here at the center impounded by animal control. And so they need that time the next day to be able to get vaccines done, the deworming done, to um, get weight done, and all, and also the picture, all while, all while other animals continue to come in. So our goal is 24 hours to get everything done. <clears throat> Does the family get charged fees only from the day of posting since the public is not allowed to walk inside the shelter to walk through and see if their pet is impounded or are they charged from the day of intake? Hold on one moment. There we go. All right. So uh, I'm going to turn this over to Michelle because she does a lot of... Um, a lot of the intakes uh, and questions and phone calls. So go ahead, Michelle, let you answer that question. I'm sorry, I was distracted. Will you repeat that question? <laughs> the question is, does the family get charged fees only from the day of posting um, or are they charged for the day of intake or from the day of intake? No, like you said, it's usually just the 24 hours, you know, um, so a dog comes in, let's say a dog came in last night and somebody came in today and said, that's my dog. We're not going to charge the boarding. Um, usually it's with a 24 hour period. So like if they came tomorrow, it was impounded last night and they didn't come until tomorrow, we'd probably charge a one day of boarding. Excuse me. All right, great. And what about the, it says public is not allowed inside the shelter to walk through and see if their pet is impounded. Um, it's, it, it's a pretty much a case by case basis, but we do let people come in. Like if somebody came in and said, I think my dog's here. And let's say we've had an influx of intakes, which has been a lot lately. And we're um, behind on getting those pictures posted. Um, if, you tell me your dog was lost this morning and our pictures haven't been posted. Yeah, we will take you back. We'll let you look to see if your pet is here, even cats. But we do not refuse ever if they want to go look. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the next one is the photos posted are not the best quality. Being informed it's because photos are taken while the animal is under a heat lamp and it causes washout on the photo, photos. Anyway, this can be changed so we get higher quality photos of these dogs for community members to view. So I looked at 
I looked at the pitchers, both the impound, the impound pitchers, and also the adopted animal pitchers. Um, I looked at 372 of them. I know because I counted. <laughs> and every one of them looked like fine pitchers. It shows all the details of the animal. Um, they're not ideal, some of them, but you can see the, the animal perfectly in all of them. I'm wondering if this is something like when we had our cold snap um, a few weeks ago. And so we had a lot of those animals um, might have been under heat lamps at the time, or maybe we had a large impound time. I don't know. I didn't see any bad pictures. So if you have one, if you see one, I need, I need that picture. Email it to me. Take a screen print. Uh, take a picture of a picture. I don't care. But give me that picture so we can correct it and we can know what's going on. Uh, also, another thing is, is if, if staff sees a bad picture, especially management, they'll get it replaced as soon as possible. So we just need to know that what's going on. But again, I went through both adoptable animals and our stray animals and didn't see anything that would have caused me alarm like you couldn't see the animal. All right, next question. What is the goal of the foster page? So the goal of the foster page of, of the Facebook page, I believe they're talking about, is to promote animals that need to get fostered. So our, anybody here, management, whomever can get on there and say, this animal needs fostering. This animal needs to get out. I, I see it quite a bit. And that's, that's the reason for it. Next one is why did it recently change? Well, it recently changed because there was a lot of um, non-foster related things happening uh, that the page wasn't set up for. There was a lot of, um, hey, success story, this animal, one of my fosters got adopted. And that's great. We want you to share that information, but share it on your personal page because everybody that's on the foster volunteer page uh, um, are already fosters and or are those that um, are you know are friends of you so you'll see that on your Facebook page anyways. Uh, why does the shelter not accept over the phone payments for impounded dogs? So and then they, they go on to cite a, a recent family was out of town and they wanted to to pay a fee or somebody else wanted to pay a fee but we couldn't do it over the phone. Um, that is a city of Las Cruces policy. That is not our policy. The city of Las Cruces is the financial uh, fiscal agents for the ASCMV. So we have to follow their policies for that. Uh, there's an IT policy and also a financial policy that both prohibit the storing or accepting of credit card numbers over the phone or online. We're not even allowed to touch the credit card. So we, we're, we turn the um, credit card scanner towards the customer and they put it in. Um, is it a pain? Yes, we totally understand that. Now, it says here, could you possibly implement an online portal for people to pay, even make donations or make exceptions to certain conditions? So the online payment portal is a great idea, something we're looking towards. Uh, and we already have a donation one. So if somebody wants to make a donation, they go to our website. There's a big sticker there that says donate. And um, that's through a third party that's been vetted through the, or through the IT department with the city. Uh, so that that's different and can we make an exception under certain conditions no because if we get audited and they see that that was done by hand put in the controller by hand then we'll get in a lot of trouble number three are the foster coordinators volunteers or is this a paid position so the foster coordinators are volunteers there's two of them uh, there's a kind of like an assistant foster coordinator and the main coordinator, Jerry and, Jess and um, Jessica. They do amazing work for us. Um, just because they're volunteers doesn't mean what they're doing is not important or it doesn't mean that they don't have a or don't have the authority. 
to do so. I don't know why some people are saying, well, they're only volunteers. They can't tell me what to do. Um, I don't see any different with me appointing somebody to the position or hiring somebody to the position. So they have that authority from me to do so uh, and to write the policies, have those rules in place. So whatever they say um, is just as if uh, they're a paid employee for that. Now, is it a paid position? Yes, it is going to be a paid position. As soon as we get that uh, information from human resources, we'll begin recruitment uh, for that position to the uh, citizens to be able to hire somebody. Number four, why are some of Foster's personals, why are some Foster's personal information being given out without permission from said Foster? I don't know if any of that information is, is occurring. If it is, you need to let me know because we do not give out personal information. So give me a specific and we will for sure address that. The second one, <coughs> well, third paper, sorry. A uh, question I have for the topics of conversations Zoom meeting has to do with the grant ASCMV was able to secure to help rescues pulling from sh the shelter. Uh, I don't, I'm not aware of any grant that was specifically for rescuing or for rescues pulling from the center. When I talked to our grant administrator, she said there is one that we got from um, PetSmart. Half of the grant was for RTOs that couldn't afford sterilization. And the other half of the grant was for rescues as an incentive saying, we'll sterilize this animal um, if, you, if you take it kind of a thing. So like, if Halo is one of our big ones, if Halo gives us a list of 10 animals they want to take, and I'm just throwing numbers out, 10 animals they want to take, and they, they say, oh, this, this dog is really cute. We'd like to have this one, but it's not sterilized. And we say, oh, well, would you take it if it was sterilized? And they say, well, yeah. Okay, that, that falls in the category of that grant. So we would be able to use that grant money to sterilize the animal. And it's not only for Halo, like those out of state rescues, it's also for any rescues around that if you can sterilize it or if, if it was sterilized, we would take it. Now there is a big if or but, <coughs> we have to have space to sterilize. As you, as you may or may not know, uh, we are down to three veterinarians that contract with us and they only do one or two, um, Sterilize, I'm sorry, one or two surgery days a month. So we are very limited on our surgeries that are currently occurring. Dr. Haddon's doing an incredible job in keeping up with all of the TNR cats and also surgical here in the center animals, like those that are up for adoption. Um, but we are hurting. We are doing all we can for recruitment um, and we're looking to do more actually. And I had a good discussion with Dr. Haddon just today about changing some efforts on uh, getting some more from our veterinarians here uh, locally and also recruitment for uh, going out, trying to find somebody for our position that we currently have. So though that's the only one that we could think of that might be for, for what this question was addressing. All right, our last question is a few of the R kennels. The R kennels are the kennels that are covered by our big green uh, fabric dome. Does this have a device that attaches water bowls to the fencing? Can all the R kennels have this device installed? I would be happy to donate the funds. So what this is they're talking about is it, it basically hangs the water on the front, but it's, it's not something that the animals can just tip over. It's not like it's just an S hook where they can just bump with their nose and it flips over. Uh, we have dug and dug and dug looking for how these were made. We can't find anything like it online. Um, we're thinking that they were made, they were fabricated uh, by somebody that used to work here or taken to somebody and fabricated there. And I know Dr. Haddon has been working a little bit on, on getting those priced out of how much they would cost and also fabricated from scratch 
Dr. Haddon, you're coming online. Do you want to say anything about that? Yes, they did. They did make two. It's my husband and a neighbor, neighbor who is a welder um, type person. Um, they did make two. We were making sure that they they worked. There was wanted to get a little bit of different type of material, and that has been ordered. So once they get that, they can put them all together. And each the the plan is initially to put one in each kennel. And we can always do more if if we want more. But yes, that is in in the works and working. Right. And we have some big plans happening for our, our kennel. It is um, not the best design. That's putting it nicely. So right now, our plans is doing quite a bit of cement work. And so we can spread out the kennel and then getting new kennels that will um, provide better availability to look in, a lot more to clean there's going to be a guillotine door in between the kennel here and a kennel here there's going to be a door in between so we can put the dog on this side clean this side and then switch it over and clean the other side so hopefully those well i know those will all happen in 2022 um hopefully before july is what we're hoping because that's when our fiscal year ends um is is june 30th so going forward all right uh Michelle, do you have anything you want to bring up or talk about? No, sir. All right. Dr. Haddon, do you have anything you want to bring up or talk about? No, I'm good. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Bernice, I see you're on. Do you have anything you'd like to talk about? No, I think I'm OK, too. Thank you. All right. We'd like to thank everybody for your questions. We appreciate it. Is does anybody we have a few minutes? I mean, we can make this a 1:30 meeting, so 30 minutes. Anybody have any questions that I can try to answer right now? You can just come off mute and ask. Yeah, Clint, I I've been kind of out of the loop, you know, for a while because I've been traveling and just different things have been going on. I haven't really had a chance to even attend the last couple of ASCMV meetings either, but I wanted to ask you, and I do, I will be at this next one, but I wanted to ask you, how is it working where I last left off was the public walkthroughs were, I want to say a Friday and a Saturday with a window of three or four hours. How is that working? And is there um, any plans to expand that, increase that? All right, thank you very much for that. Um, I can tell you, <laughs> Since we started that, Gene, we've had uh, three employees, three or four employees test positive for COVID. So now, did they get it from uh, increased walkthroughs? I don't know. But it um, that worry that was there is still definitely there, seeing we didn't have anything like that when we were limiting it. But Michelle, do you want to you want to talk about how those are, are occurring, the walk-ins and the well, I've been tracking the numbers. Um, I really haven't got enough data to make um, a solid judgment, I guess. Um, normally it's a few groups at a time. Um, the difficult part is, is getting volunteers in here to assist with those days. Um, so anybody who's willing to come in on those days and help volunteer would be great um, because we have the public coming in and we don't have the volunteers or staff to monitor what's going on. Um, so I'm looking forward to more volunteers. Right, and that's a, that's a good way to put it, Michelle, is that uh, the data really hasn't been enough. We've been doing it for a month now. Um, so we, have, we already had a lot of success with the, um, with the uh, DAX. Uh, what do we call it? No, what do we call it, Michelle? No one going home or everyone going home or no more home, something like that for the- Oh, home period. for the holidays? Home for the holidays. There you go. Thank you. Um, hey, that was a good, that was a great success. We did. We had over 80 adoptions, just- 85. 85 in just, uh, I think it was two weeks, two or three weeks. So again, it's hard to say 
if the walk-in portions are, are helping or hurting, it's definitely um, not hurting as far as, you know, chance for people to come in and see and see what's going on. Yeah, it's, yeah, like I said, not enough data. We're averaging, averaging one adoption per walkthrough day or just the walkthroughs. That doesn't count the, that doesn't take into account all the appointments that are made just for the walkthroughs. It's an average of one per day. All right, thanks. Any, any other questions? Uh, somebody's typing online. It says, will you be bringing the feral cat spay neuter program back to the public? Our property backs up to residents. We have at least 29 cats for value and cats too. Yeah. We are desperate to control them. So again, we have never stopped the, the community cat program. It is still going in full swing. The only thing we have stopped is the public bringing us cats. Now there's a workaround and that's to call animal control and say, I have this cat. Um, and then they'll come and pick it up. So, but just right currently now, no, there is no uh, foreseen date we want to, it's, we call it suspended. We don't call it um, closed or quit. We eventually will open up the public where public can just bring us the cats. Uh, but right now we are absolutely smug, especially with only that three veterinarians. They're doing one or two a week, a month. So that really puts a damper on how many we can do. It's getting to the point where we may have to start euthanizing feral cats. Um, it's not humane for them to be sitting in traps and waiting for surgeries for several days. Um, so if we get to that point where they are waiting for several days, then that's when we start looking at euthanasia. So it's all about if anybody knows a veterinarian that's willing to come and even one or two days, you tell them to contact us, contact Dr. Haddon, and we'll get them in as soon as possible. Any other questions? You're welcome. Okay. Well, I think we're good. It's 1.30. Thank all of you for coming. Appreciate you. Again, please don't hesitate to call me, to email me. Um, I'm even available on Facebook every now and then. If you, if you tag me on something, it may take a little while, but I'll get back with you usually within a day or two. I appreciate everybody. Have a great long weekend, and we'll see you later.